You look like a man who could do with a cup of tea. Yes, I've been rushed off my feet with this consecration. Oh, yeah. How did it go? <laughs> uh, well, it's been a bit of a rush, but at least everything's sorted out now for the funeral. Afternoon, gents. Where's the moustache gone? Oh, well, I figured this village is only big enough for one. Let's face it, Seth, you are King Tash! You mean you lost your nerve? Oh, no, no. Viv said every time I kissed her, I brushed her teeth with it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you have that trouble with Betty. No, she just slips her teeth out. <laughs> Good afternoon, my love. How was work? Mm, fantastique. Diane said look ten years younger without the moustache. Well, that makes her at least twenty years too old for you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs Kirk. Hi. Ah, uh, do I detect a slightly despondent demeanour this afternoon? Oh, she's trying to think of things to do with the Twisted Sisters. Mrs Orb, they're perfectly normal children. They're just have a difficult time of it. And we all... OK, then. Hiya, sorry. I've just popped in to tell you I've got one more thing to do at the surgery, but I'll be back soon. They're going to be here soon. And I'll be back in a minute. I've a message from Betty. What's she want? I have to tell you, she's got a new hat for your collection. Oh, that's very kind of her. It's one of them we caught around brim to shoot flies off. Seth tells me you've got a new neighbour. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, I take it things haven't got off to a smooth start, then. Well, if you're fond of understatement, you could say that. Have you given him that cake yet? No, he was very rude to me. I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. Why didn't you have him round for tea? You wouldn't catch me alone with him. The man's as rough as a dirt track. You don't have to be alone. Seth and I will keep you company. How's Ray? It's fine. You're lucky to have him. It'd be much worse if you were on your own. Mm. Diane, I know we've been through this, but is there nothing you can remember about Mac? No, love. Well, it's just that if we had some evidence, we could go to the police. Well, there's nothing. I, uh... I don't mean to put my nose where it shouldn't be. But you will anyway. If you ask me, he's always been a bit dodgy. And did we ask you? No, but I'm just saying, you know. Well, how do you mean dodgy? Well, I mean, they're all a bit like that, aren't they? I mean, these builder types. No fixed abode. Never know where they've been, what they've been up to. If you want someone who really knows him, why don't you ask Sid? If anyone's going to have some inside information worth listening to, it'll be him. Do you know, I'm sure I saw him down your house when you were away. Mac? Ah, oh, I was doing some work for Ray. Yeah, well, not when I saw him. He wasn't. He had some woman in tow. At Meal Cottage? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> was that you knocking? Yes, it was. Come to complain about noise, no doubt. No, actually, I was going to ask you if you'd like to come for tea. Not short of company this afternoon, are you? No. As a matter of fact, there's Seth and the vicar in there. But I can see you're too busy. No, oh, never too busy for a cup of tea. Besides, my kettle's knackered. I could use a brew. Afternoon, girls. Hi. How was school? All right. Paddy and me, we were wondering, would you two like to help us decorate the house for Christmas? We won't be here for Christmas. Hi, girls. Everything all right? I was just telling them about the Christmas decorations. Oh, yeah? And what do you think? Can we get a real Christmas tree? Yeah, I don't see why not. What do you think, Chantal? Please yourself. Have you been to school like that? Like what? With the, um, with all the makeup on? Yeah. Are you allowed to wear makeup at school? Everybody does. I don't think you should wear that much. Why not? Don't want to look like you. Um, what exactly do you mean by that? Plain looking. All I meant was you're pretty enough without it. So, uh, why did you decide to move here? <coughs> I'd heard it were friendly. Is there a spoon? Plus, it's handier for work. 
Very good. Yes, it is actually very good. Do you read? Oh, I prefer talking books myself. I thought those were for people who didn't read. Actually, first ones were meant for blind folk. Really? Yeah. I can read, of course, but uh, I like to keep busy. I can't bear idleness, so I listen to books while I'm working. Uh, do two things at once. Not I like more than a good slab of sponge cake. <sighs> All depends on baker. I like a lightness of sponge and not too much jam in filling. If it's too sweet, it's no good. I'm sure that will be to your liking, Vicar. Mmm. <laughs> Grand. Mmm. Very nice. Middling. So are you still harbouring a fugitive? Terry, you mean, yes, he's still here. Are you not worried about that? No, why should we be? Well, what if it turns out? But he actually has done it. Terry is not a stalker. A romantic form, maybe, but not a stalker. Anyway, according to Louise, if you believe her, it's Mac now. Yeah, but we don't know it's him for sure. Well, he's the prime suspect. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's actually him, Vivian. Maybe, but in the end, I wouldn't be at all surprised if she's making the whole thing up. And how could she have done that? Well, I don't know. I mean, you're nobody these days if you haven't got a stalker. Just because Madonna had one, she probably thinks she's got to have one. Anyway, at least it lets Terry off the hook. Yeah, I suppose things weren't looking too good for him, were they? Well, beyond being smitten and stubborn, he really hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But if you hadn't been with him when that wreath was delivered, then he'd still be in the spotlight. Yeah, well, sometimes you have to stick your neck out for what you believe in, don't you? What do you mean? I wasn't there. What did you say that you were? Well, because I knew he didn't do it. She lied? Oh, yeah, but only because I believe in him. You'd have done the same. I've lived most of my life in city, so moving out here is a bit like New Frontier. I've got lots of plans, though. I'm going to put up a workshop in back garden there. You'll need planning permission before you build. I'm not building it. It's being delivered. We can't just go throwing up any old thing. I've always wanted a, a, a place of my own to work. You know, I, I think it's important. Oh, it is. A man's workshop is a shelter from the troubles of life. I thought that was what the church was for. Uh, no offence, man. No, 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 none taken. In fact, someday I quite fancy a workshop of my own. This shed. Workshop. I hope you're not going to be making a lot of noise in it. You can't make an omelette without cracking eggs. It's a recycle structure, so it's going to need some refurbishment. <laughs> there we go, Toots. <laughs> her name is Tootsie and she doesn't get cake. Oh, a little bit won't do her any harm. Are you deliberately trying to make her sick? No, but if she was, it'd be your fault. You bake cake. <laughs> Right. It's been a pleasure, but I've got things to do. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I can't wait to see this workshop. Oh, well, it'll be here tomorrow. Brian. All right. It's my dearly beloved wife about. She's in the storeroom getting me a bottle of ginger wine. Got rid of your moustache, then? Yeah, yeah. It has to change. It's taken five years off you. I thought we'd agreed not to keep any secrets from each other. Well, if you're talking about me covering for Terry, that happened well before we were discussing your moustache. It doesn't matter when it happened. The point is, you didn't tell me about it. Nobody else have you got hidden up your sleeve? Nothing. Um, was it ginger beer you wanted or ginger wine? Ginger wine, if you've got it, love. Viv, if Terry wasn't with you when that wreath was delivered, then where was he? I don't know. And how do you know it wasn't him? We both know it wasn't Terry. Yeah, but we don't have any proof. And we don't have proof it was. Only speculation. So, if Terry's got nothing to hide, then why was he asking you for an alibi? He didn't ask me. He was put on the spot and I just stepped in. Anyway, it doesn't matter now, does it? Matt was doing it all along. So, I was right. Oh. You won't find anything in there. How do you know? Because uh, I emptied it last week. Oh, well, you could have told me. Hmm? When I got £2.50, I didn't think it were worth mentioning. I'll tell you something you could do that would be really useful. What, you mean this isn't? No. You could have a word with Cain for me and ask him to put more money in the pot. I thought you were going to speak to him. Well, I have, but he never listens to me. All right, I'll speak to him later. Oh, what the hell's oh. that? Oh. All right? 
What are you doing here? Oh, I've got grave news, brother. Huh? What are you talking about? I need a drink. Oh, go of the coffee be all right for you. Uh, whiskey straight up. Oh. Can I get you? Oh, a pint of lager could have a treat. Max still away, is he? Yeah, for a few days. Did uh, Ray catch him before he went? No, and I'm sure he will when he gets back. Who did he have in our house when we were away? Mike. Well, I gave him under a couple of days. Yeah, not you. Who was the woman he had in there? <laughs> Nobody I know of. He was seen taking a woman into our house. Who by? Never mind who by. Why was he taking a woman in there? Look, I don't know anything about it. Right, so you probably don't know anything about Max stalking me either. Mike! Because if you do, you're going to go down as an accessory. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. OK, so maybe he did have a woman in the house, but that doesn't mean he's a stalker. They stayed there? Yeah. They stayed the night in our house? He was only trying to use the place to impress her so he could... You know, nothing more than that. He had sex with a woman in my bed? It was only one night. Oh. Have you met Edna's new neighbour? Oh, the bin man. Yes, we've said hello. I think he's going to be nothing but trouble. And what makes you say that? He's having this eyesore of a shed delivered tomorrow and he's refurbishing it. Oh, well, I'm sure he's not that bad when he gets to know him. I've already got one troublesome neighbour. I don't need another. The more I get to know about that Jarvis skeleton, the more You're I... right, Jarvis? Not bad considering. What can I get you? Uh, I'll have a start, please. Edna tells me you're having a shed delivered. No, no, not a shed, a workshop. Oh, right, well, if you need any tools or such like, then just call up me at the garage. That's very neighbourly of you. Yeah, well, we'll like that round here. <sighs> Is that so? That's <laughs> right. Uh, Come on! Uh, oh, it's just useless. Uh, well, he can't stop here, Zach. I've got enough mouths to feed without another big one. I'll put him out just like that. He can sleep it off in one of them sheds. I wonder what his news is. Oh, he's probably just run out of booze. Hmm? Oh, he said it was grave. Oh, yeah, well, if you drink as much booze as he does and you run out of booze, it probably is grave. Uh. Wake hey! up! Hey! Is that...? No, Mickey Mouse. How did he get here? God knows. What do you want? Can I have another drink? Oh. Right, that's it. I've had enough of this. Ah, Come on! Zach. Get up! Don't show me out, Zach. You can keep in the barn. You're not having any more booze. Oh, just, please. J just, just one more. It's about Dad. Eh? Huh? Well, what is it? Does he want some money, too? He's dying, Zach. Hmm? They make peace. Inspector, thank you for coming at such short notice. So, have you been to see him? Yeah. Oh, no, no. He doesn't want to see me. He wants to see you. Me? Yeah. Yeah. What does he want with me? I don't know. Maybe he wants to leave you something in his will. <laughs> yeah. Like what? The... The Jed Dingle book of how to be a good father. I'm not going to go and see him. <clears throat> he hasn't got long, Zach. So what? He's had a lifetime to get in touch with me and he never bothered. Maybe he wants to make amends. Yeah, well, it's too late. By about 40 years. Be a less chance, Zach. After all he's done for me, he can go to hell. That's the address of the hospital, is it? I am not going to go and see him. Suit yourself. I'm just a messenger. 
You know, you look ten years younger without that moustache. Yeah? You're the third person to say that to me today. Must be some truth in it, then. Mm. Hey, Edna, I've discovered the secret of eternal youth. You'll have to hurry up if you're going to tell Viv about it. Facial hair. Oh, she'll already know about that. No, listen, you grow a beard for a week or two, you shave it off, everybody tells you you look ten years younger. <laughs> Port and lemon. A bit early for you, ain't it? It is never too early when you've got Inspector Clueless living next door to you. What's Jarvis done now? He's got one of his talking books blaring through the wall. Not only can the man not read, he's obviously deaf as well. Is it any good? I'm sure once he's settled in, everything will be just fine. Oh, well, you can say that. You don't have to live next door to him. Have you ever had any pets? Yeah, I've got a cat round here somewhere. Thank you. I've had a few dogs over the years, I know. What kinds? I've had a collie, a couple of Labradors, and one of their mine's 57 ones. Did you ever have one that was run over by a car? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh! Who's this then? My boyfriend. And does this boyfriend have a name? Rob. Well, nice to meet you then, Rob. All right. And how old are you? Excuse me, where do you think you're going? Gonna listen to some CDs. No, I don't think so, not upstairs anyway. Why not? Because you're not allowed to. Don't be so tight. Chantel, you can say or you can call me as many names as you want to, but you're still not going up them stairs. You can listen to him down here if you like. See you tomorrow. Wait up! Hey, you're not going. I am. Look, Rob can leave if he wants to, but you're staying here. Have you always been so boring? Chantelle! She does this. She'll come back. Louise! Hey. You all right? Jerry McKinley had some tramp in here when we were away. What? That sicko got some woman, brought her down here, and spent the night doing God knows what to her. In this house? Yes. Who told you this? Brian Adiman. He saw them coming in when we were away. And who was the woman? I don't know, but he wanted to have sex with her in our bed. Right, OK. Who else knows about this? Well, I asked Sydney. He confessed. That Mac was bothering you? No, that he had the woman here. And I'm not sleeping in that. Right, I'll get rid of these. We have to phone the police. Well, I already have. Good. He's not getting away with her this time. There's nothing they can do. Sorry? They said if we gave him a key to get in, he didn't commit any crime. After all this happened, that's all they can say? Yeah. Right. My mum wanted to call him Ringo, but I call him Spike. Can I have a chocolate one? Of course you can. Chantel? Chantel, I know it can't be easy for you coming here and staying with us, but we really do want to try and make it as fun for you as possible. What would you know about fun? And I'm sorry about Rob, but you know as well as us that we can't allow you to stay upstairs with boyfriends. I can at home. Well, maybe, but you're not at home now, are you? No, I'm not. We're just trying to do what's best for you. We're well, not doing a very good job of it, are you? Carly, you can stay for a bit longer if you like. Carly! What on earth is he playing now? Excuse me, some people are trying to sleep! Right! <laughs> Mac, Sid. Again. Uh, listen, if you get this message, can you just give us a quick call back? I uh, need to speak to you pretty sharpish. Cheers. Bye. You all right? Yeah, not bad. Listen, what you said yesterday about Ray being someone not to mess with? Yeah, what about it? What exactly did you mean by it? Ray is not the sort of person that I'd want to get on the wrong side of. Why? What have you done now? 
Oh, no, no, it's not me. No. Oh, apparently, Louise reckons Mac's been stalking her. Oh, don't start on me with all this stalking stuff. I'm just a bit worried about what Ray might do to him, you know, when he gets back. Anyway, by the time Mac gets here, he'll be out the spotlight. Scott will have been in it. Those pesky kids will have unveiled a true culprit to be... Seth. I guess it'll be you. What do you want now? What do you think you're doing? I'm just playing a spot of music. Half the houses in Houghton can hear that. I heard your hymns through all, and I remember that old saying, every home should be filled with music. Except the one next door. Like it or not, I live here now. You may live here, but it'll take a long time before you'll be accepted. How long have you been here? Long enough. I wouldn't suppose there's many's accepted you yet. Right. I've got rid of us. I'm sorry for getting you involved in all of this. Oh, don't be silly. It's not your fault. If the police weren't so absolutely useless, they'd do something about it. I'm not sure I can sleep up there tonight. Tell you what. Why don't you run upstairs, throw some bits in an overnight bag, and I'll book us a room at the Clarence. You'll never get one at this time of night. I'll get one. Trust me. I don't want to run away from this, Ray. And we won't. Tonight we stay in a hotel, tomorrow we come back and we'll sort this out. I don't want you getting involved in anything. Don't worry. We'll get through this. Thank you.